Yeah, and again, Katie, you also brought up the dosing, which is different when we're using single agent versus when we're using combinations. We have that in mind, we took some side effects. I promise we'll come back to the side effects and some clinical pearls around TKIs and even our second and third line available options. Before that, if the disease was correct, then we have data from t 2, we have other TKIs available, we have Belsudafan. Katie, how are you sequencing these agents? And what data did you have here? Yeah, so I really want to hit and highlight on, we now have two large randomized phase threes that has shown that if a patient is progressing just off of or recently from a checkpoint inhibitor, that there's no benefit in continuing a checkpoint inhibitor. You know, I think we all want that to be the case because we know that's really the only chance for a durable benefit. For the most part, we just saw increased toxicity, increased side effects. If a patient's progressing on that frontline treatment, then I do sequence KIs. And then my choice of sequencing uh, KIs and, and belzutafan it's a little bit, um, I think we don't have the a right answer. We don't have a sequencing trial to know for sure. Often it's dependent on what you've done in the frontline settings. If you've done a Nevo Cabo or a Pembro Limba, then I frequently will just reverse and do the opposite in that second line setting. We know, of course, Belzutafan and Tavosna, both great agents, been approved in the third and fourth line setting. Both are either in trials or have just come, so we see data being used earlier in lines of therapy. So I think it's possible that Belzutafan will start to, to move earlier. And I know that we've seen some data for Bosnib from Tinevo showed its benefit showing a median PFS in the line setting around nine months. So again, I think it's what are you comfortable with? What did you use in the frontline setting? Belzutafan is a newer agent on the market. So if I have just a second, I might touch on that great because it's a different side effect profile and gives patients a break from um, hypertension, diarrhea syndrome, all these things that they deal with sequencing through KIs. The couple pearls that I have having several patients on the Belzutafan trials and now in student practice is monitor closely for that anemia that's an on-target side effect when you block HIF, you block EPO, and it can happen pretty quickly. So I bring them back in every couple of weeks in the first several months recommendations are to hold or do a dose reduction as needed for the anemia. I even consider using EPO as well. Uh, and then the other pearl that I'll mention is it can result in hypoxia. The percentage they saw in clinical trials was quite low, but when my patients, both on trial and in standard practice, is it can sneak up on them. I told my patients to take an oximeter and monitor it daily because we can catch it earlier. That way it typically is it's not like it just happens overnight. It's kind of a slow progression. But if they're waiting three weeks or four weeks in between clinic visits, you'd rather catch them earlier than them becoming into a clinic. Is that also dose dependent, uh, the hypoxia issue here? Um, so, yes, we've, um, I've had some attempts. You hold the drug, you get resolution of the hypoxia, you send them home with supplemental oxygen, and this side effect resolves. I have been able to dose reduce and not cause the hypoxia. I've, I've also had the opposite happen where we've dose reduced mm -hmm. and still the hypoxia has returned. I think it is just that kind of close monitoring and we still don't really quite understand. There's some hypothesis that it's the effect on the carotid body or multiple comorbidities, COPD and sleep apnea, but I, I don't think we quite understand who are the individuals who get hypoxia. Thanks for covering that, Katie. With regards to Bazoon fan important clinical pearls, but with regards to also the any insights that you might have there. The first insight is that from TNEVO2 and the combination arm, they used a lower dose due to some concerns by the regulatory agent versus the full dose. We saw that the full dose, um, patients treated on full dose had the better PFS and really no differences in quality of life metrics or AE profile. My first pearl is I would start at the full dose and then down as needed. It's a three week on, one week off regimen, similar to prior Sutin, the benefit in that week off and some of the side effects improving. I think just a typical TKI monitoring hypertension, we'll see with that pure VEGF effect, probably the main thing that I see. And again, Roy, you had brought up that we're using epinevo and melanoma, lung cancer. TKI is another thing, not Tavazinet, but we've used LAN, CABO, and so many other things via HCC, of course, here as well. 